So as you can see here, everything that you're seeing on the screen was, of course, created in the physical modeler. I'm going to go to this loading area because this is the area where you'd start to pick up some of the things you'd want to add over in this area of the program. So let's go ahead and expand this down. So here I have my reference load cases that were created in the physical modeler and brought over. I added over here my seismic definition, which I would have had to do anyway, and I added my seismic load cases. Once I did that, I just clicked on load case details and I generated um, some AISC public load combinations. Now, in addition to that, I could have also added some wind load. I can also add some information if I needed to do an AISC 360 direct analysis. I could add all that in the analytical modeler, so I can still do everything I would have done, even though I'm using a physical modeling workflow. So I've generated these load combinations. And then if we move on to the analysis area, you can see I've added an analysis command. And if we move on to our design area, you can see I added my design code. Um, I just went with one design parameter here. I added a, a 50 KSI yield strength for my wide flange sections, and I did a basic code check. So if I'm using a physical modeling workflow, where, where do I go from here when I'm just performing a design? Well, I'm going to run my analysis just as I would any other time. And I'm going to review my results just as I normally would. So here what I'm looking at on my screen is I'm looking at the steel utilization. I performed a code check on all of these members. I want to see if they passed or failed. Now I can see on my screen that everything in blue or red is currently failing with an interaction ratio greater than 1.0. As I look on the screen, I can see that the majority of those members are both my floor beams and my roof beams. So what do I do now? Well, with a code check, I need to perform an iterative solution. I need to go back, change the sizes that were assigned to the members, and then reperform the analysis to um, reevaluate whether or not I have a passing design. And I'm going to want to keep doing that until I've achieved everything passing. So what I'm going to do to change those sizes, I'm going to take a look, see what I have here. I'm going to go to my physical modeling mode. I'm going to go to my members tab, and then I'm going to want to change some sections here. Of course, I can just select the member. I can go back here, select a new section size. So what we're going to do next, now here what we did was we showed you a simple code check. So you're going to come here, you're going to change your section size, go back over, and just reperform your analysis. Um, very similar to the same workflow that you would have if you were just doing everything in the analytical modeling mode. It's just you're going to change your sizes over here versus over there. So let's go ahead. I'm going to close this model down. And the other workflow that I want to show you is, well, what am I going to do uh, it's this model. Okay. What am I going to do if I want to perform an optimization? Well, there's a couple things that you need to think about when performing an optimization using a physical modeling workflow. So what I'm going to do is I'm first going to go over to this design area. Now, this model is exactly identical to the last model we just saw where I just performed a simple code check. For this model, though, it's slightly different. I used a select command. Now, if anybody is not as familiar with performing an optimization in STAD Pro, I'm going to go ahead and encourage you to um, take, we have a class on that, performing um, an optimization in the STAD Pro. It's going to show you the complete optimization workflow in getting your command structure in order. There is an extra thing, though, that you're definitely going to want to take a look at, which is something you're going to want to take a look at anyway when performing an optimization in STAD Pro, is you're going to want to take a look at your model and see which members are continuous members and which members aren't. So when I was in the physical modeler, say for example, these columns, I modeled these columns from the base all the way up to the top because I'm expecting it to be one continuous column that goes from the base of the structure all the way up to support the roof. And I figured that these members are gonna frame either into the column web or the column flange. So this is one continuous member. 
Well, if I assign just a simple optimization command, a select command to this member and this member, what is very, very possible is that SAD Pro is going to come back and maybe assign one size to this member and another size to this member. But I know that that's not possible. This member is going from my foundation all the way up to my roof structure. It needs to be the same size throughout. So what you're definitely going to want to utilize is a group command in order to ensure or force STAD Pro to assign the same size to every member that is belongs to a physical member in the physical modeler. So you can see I've done that with my columns. I've done that with my girders. I'm expecting this to be one solid member. And I've done that with my top and bottom cords. I kind of assumed I'd want my top and bottom cords to be the same size as each other. So you're going to want to take a special look at that because you're going to want to make sure that those are assigned the same size. The rest of everything is exactly the same. And of course, using the group command is something you're going to want to use in the analytical modeler anyway, because again, you're still going to want to construct this from the bottom to the top. So it's your way of controlling it. Now let's go ahead and perform the optimization. Okay. I'm again going to go to my post processor to review my results once the analysis is done. And I'm going to take a look at my utilization table. Did that click it? There we go. Okay. So now what we're going to do is we're going to take a look at our design results table. And what we're going to see is an analysis property and a design property. The analysis property is the initial section size that you assigned to the particular member in the model. And the design property is basically the re results that happened after you performed an optimization. So say for example, member number one um, was initially assigned as a C6 by 13. After the optimization, it decided it should, um, what would be most appropriate would be a C9 by 13. Now, if you're not as familiar with optimization, let me just give you a little bit of a background on that. When STAD Pro performs an optimization, basically what it does is it sticks to the same section type that you initially assigned. So the initial section type assigned to this top cord was a channel section from the United States section database. It's gonna go back to that same database in the channel table to find another channel that would work. It's not going to try to optimize it to a different shape like a, an angle section or a wide flange section. It's gonna stick with the same shape that you initially assigned. So I can see here that a lot of sections came up with a new size assigned to it. Anything that was assigned a group command, such as these columns, it should be the same column size for all of these columns. Same with the girders. It's gonna be the same size for the continuous length. So now how do I take this to fruition when I'm using a physical modeling workflow? I'm going to go over to the physical modeler now. Okay. When we enter the physical modeler after we do an optimization, the program is going to ask you some questions. And basically what it's leading you towards is to ask you, do you want to update the sections as a result of your optimization? So... We're going to go ahead and click on the profile selection pull down menu. And then we have an action checkbox over here. You can see member number one, we just saw it in the post processor. It was a C13, a C9 by 13.4. Now, what's really nice about this workflow is it will allow you to go ahead and individually select which ones you want to update and which ones you don't. When a selection is performed in STAD Pro, it won't necessarily always just perform an optimization on the members that failed. Um, you know, or needed a larger section as a result of selection is going to optimize every single section um, in the model that was assigned a selection command. And you may decide that some, some sections you don't want to change. For example, section number two, I had an L three by three by quarter and actually made it smaller. And I might decide I don't want that. So we can go ahead and take some action here if we want to uh, change any of those sizes and it'll automatically update your physical model. So I'm going to go ahead and cancel here so I can retain my initial model. Now if we do come over to the physical modeler 
and update any section sizes. Of course, the same rules would apply as if you were in your StatPro analytical modeler. The stiffness matrix is slightly different than the initial analysis that was performed. And you're going to, again, want to go back and just reperform the analysis to make sure everything kind of worked out well for you.